spectacular. Sebastian, there's, you know, different organisms that are hanging out on the branches of the coral. Could you kind of touch upon, like, what that relationship um, is about? Wow. Yeah, of course. So often enough, when we see a lot of these organisms hanging on the corals like this, we call them commensals, uh, which is a reference to commensalism, a type of symbiosis where two organisms cohabitate in a sense where one benefits and the other gets no net change whatsoever. So it doesn't negative impact them or positive impact them. Um, so the corals are, just don't mind them at all. While well, they get to go, well, the, these commensals get to get higher up in the water column into better feeding spots rather than on the seafloor. Mahalo nui. Of course. I'm not sure if it's just the lighting or if it's, the, it's actually a different species, but these brittle, these uh, basset stars are looking a lot more brown than we saw earlier on the dive. Hmm. I still think they, they blend in really well with those corals, if it's the lighting or whatever. Wait, what is this one called? This big pink one. Well, that's Paragorgia, bubble the bubblegum coral. Okay. Oh. I think I can only recognize it when the polyps are closed. Because otherwise it doesn't look like bubblegum so much. So how many different varieties of coral right there in that shot, Sebastian? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, give me a challenge. <laughs> There's, um... One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not saying about six or seven different species. I'm saying several species of chrysogorges, which are these kind of like lighter, fluid, bushy ones. We're seeing the bubblegum coral. We're seeing the bamboo coral. I see a black coral in there too. Yes. I can see it better in the still camera. Such an abundance. Do you think the bubblegum coral is old because of how big it is? Absolutely. Whenever you get corals run to those large sizes, um, typically they're upwards of hundreds of years old. Wow. All right, Hannah, we've got another rock question for you. Okay. Um, and we were talking about sampling earlier. Yes. Um, and a viewer was wondering about like Hercules' capacity for rock samples, like kind of what limits us, like how many rocks can we take in one dive? Is it based on space? Is it, and I know we've talked about this before also in relation to the permit. So can you just yeah. explain like, how do you choose which rocks? When mm. So we're trying to get it like evenly spaced. It's another growth. For, so we're the collecting, so that's why I want to wait till wavepoint four because, at some point. because we collected one at wavepoint three, and I feel like we're good I till wavepoint four. But tells you it's it coming. just depends on <laughs> like if the seamount has been sampled before. So like the mm -hmm. last two, they've been sampled before, so we weren't as 
worried about getting enough of them, but since Sea this star. one has never been explored yet, we do want to be more, uh, have more purpose in picking our rock samples and also um, making sure that we do get not all, hopefully not all 15, because we can only take 15, but I don't, per, per I'm dive. not sure. How, um, how many could we fit in the, in her? Probably not more. I wouldn't think we can fit all that I many. I don't feel like it's we a, could fit 15. It's more of a weight capacity, I think. Yeah, it's definitely weight. Um, you could probably take like 15 small ones if we put them all in boxes. We've, we've shoved big rocks on the porch. Held yeah, but I don't think the there's like 15 slots for them. Well, rocks can share a container and like most really? biology. Yeah. Then how do you know which one's which? We do a wrist rotate we, to image what all sides of it. Are for. Okay. And plus we have the, the actual image shots as we collect them as well that we can compare to as well. Okay. Good to know because we had like a baby. We had two like very small um, mm -hmm. samples last time. But yeah, two samples that we had last time were really flat and not angular or like a pillow basalt. So they didn't, whoa. Ooh, yeah. They didn't give me an. What is, is that a giant mushroom coral right what? there? The orange one? There's the a Venus flytrap. Oh, this one? Yeah, can we get a zoom in on that please? I'm getting stills of it too. Which one? This one. Oh, okay. And there's a Venus flytrap anemone back there. Over zoom. Coming in. I think this seamount might be even better than wow. the, uh, the first dive we did. Uh, where oh, oh. Hello. <laughs> right as soon as he said that. <laughs> this seamount has just been amazing. This seamount's amazing. incredible. Oh, wow. Sebastian, I might have to. Do you still think that this one's not your favorite uh, so far? Uh, the seamount? Yes. Coming I never out. said it was my favorite. Oh, I thought you said that it wasn't. I wonder if we could name it like the Hawaiian word Maybe. for a uh, coral forest. Could oh, look how Venus pretty. Project. Yeah, the naming process is actually yeah. a really um, in-depth process. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, I know we're not so, going to pick it. I was just yeah. saying. That would be uh, left to the experts in the nomenclature group. Yeah, yeah. But you would give them a description of like what you saw, right? They use all of the descriptions. Wow. So it, it, it is a really time consuming process to create a name. All right. Um, Coming out. Go. Yep. Just naming of seamounts in general is a very tough process, especially if they are part of a chain, because usually a large amount of the rules with, um, I believe it's Jebco that usually names them is that usually if they're part of a chain or a group, they have to have coinciding names. Like, the musician seamount has Bach. It has other famous musicians for each seamount. And uh, so if it can be take a long time, it takes years to name a group of seamounts. Can we get, actually get a zoom in on these low-lying corals, please? Just a quick one. Can I uh, zoom ahead just a little bit more? Yeah, go ahead. Over this, unless we're actually like zooming or. Whoa, look at that one. It looks oh, like yeah. it's growing one of its legs back. All right, go for zoom. Ooh. Ooh. Is this documentation just in case because these guys look like more fresh recruits up here. Ooh, big, big mm -hmm. Oh, oh so wait. Um Asafka is asking for a collection on the All right, what's the stuff ship? Yeah. What is she? Okay. The ones that we just zoomed in on. Nav bridge. Nav bridge. We can get a better shot just to confirm it. 
All stop, please. There's a sea star when we're done way back there on the right that had like uh, 12 or 15, 20 arms, something like what that. What did she want specifically, do you know? So we zoomed in on the white, and then she said, oh, wow, See collapse. It? Sea star? So, uh, yep, this white, these white guys, the he's going to frag. The one of the white ones? Yes. Oh, okay. Ship is stopped right now. Roger. Two, slurp. Let's go ahead and go for a slurp three when we get the chance. Slurp. Roger. You want to pick one from the right? Yeah. We can do a push just so we can confirm before we sample. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe one of these ones. Push sure. there? Yep. Come out just a little bit. Lounge, do you have any idea what these might be? Cameras. Jar three, please. Uh, yeah, that's flush. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, no, flush will go right out. Yeah. There's no filter on flush. Three, jar three. Uh, All right. No, three's behind it. You're saying through flush to that number three. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Do I you guys it. want to maybe try um, putting Seven. it in one of the bio boxes instead of slurping? These might be kind of Um. Hard. Yeah, we can do that as well. I would go in e Five. most likely D for the snip. Four. Oh, are we doing slurp or Three. are we doing bio box? Your call. Um, yeah, your call. We can do the bio box if you want, Mike. I just, it just, uh, remember when you tried to sample these white ones before it got kind of... Oh, it kind of got the, like, stuck yeah, a little stuck. bit until we had to or brittle. Uh, tap it. Um, yeah, just give it a tap and we can throw it into bio box D. How big of a... Um, we can go up to half. Up to half, okay. Do you want to push? Keep pushing, yeah. I want to see if I can uh, stay about there. Yeah, those are the coral cutters. There you go. You can slurp all of it. Those pieces will probably get stuck, I think. All right, so where do you want this piece? Let's go in bio box D. Z? D. Delta? D Starboard? is dog. Starboard box? Sebastian, where is that? Starboard. Um, that's starboard, yes. Yeah. Oh. Starboard. Getting pulled. Uh, yeah. Atlanta's probably drifting past yeah. us. I gotta lift up.
see if I can turn around. I've got terrain in the Atlanta camera. <clears throat> Yeah, I can come up to you though, if you want. We can stretch out or something. <clears throat> We're fully stretched out. I'm just backing down until I can turn around. There's also a good current. So it's hard. I can't lateral back. And I'm dumping flow because the craft is on. Might have to step the ship ship back. What's that? Might have to step the ship back. I'm not covering any ground. Oh. I'm getting, um, the current's just blowing me and I'm stretched out. Okay. I can't turn around. Is it possible to, to just keep this heading and drop the sample in the, and then turn off the craft to get your power back? Okay. If it's try easy. that, but if I drop, it's it's a small small piece. I don't know if I drop it. If it's easier, you can yeah. just probably slurp it still. I was just trying to. I don't know. Yeah, if we want to slurp it, we can still put it into three. I just worry it's a small piece if we try and slurp it and we lose it, and we're never getting it back for up this high. But yeah. what, what's if we put it in a box, it'll be safer. But so, but what's the issue? I, I'm stretched out. The current's blowing me oh, back, see. and I can't turn around because the craft's on, and I'm dumping flow, so I don't have any jam to to come back back down on the. Yeah. So my question is like, can we just not try to use the uh, thrusters and just put the sample into the bio box and then would the forward bio box be easier um there's omega is open the right one all right wait i'm making a little bit of head right here we just have to be mindful if we get anything big that it's going to have to fit into starboard f because we won't be able to put any large rocks on top of it or um any other bios with it and that'd be a huge space, unfortunately, taken up by a small piece. All right. Let me give it one more try to turn around here. Can you come out of auto-heading? Can you come out of auto-heading? <clears throat> if you want me to step back, I can do that. That's all right. Let's just put the sample away and it'll help. Can do it. All right, so this was going to go in. Um, starboard by box D, if okay. possible. So, can we bucket off starboard on, please? Yep. Thank you. And I'll give you a sample. A sample 50. No, I'll give you a sample salvo. Delta all, all the, the way all aft the way the inboard.
Nice. Thank you guys. Sample collected. Switching back to dive. Drawer's still closing. Jake, you've got a lot of support coming in from the chat. That was awesome. Right. Good job, Jake. Yeah, we can take it off. We did it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Craft is now secure, hopefully. Oh, you got that. All right. I'll let you get back where you want to be and then you let me know when you're ready. Yep. Jake, I think you had taken your headset off, but we had a lot of people that are very proud of you and we're supporting you in that sampling. It was ah, great. Your mom's oh. online. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me writing in over and over. <laughs> Tito, you've also got some fans in here too. Earlier, um, you said dumping flow. What did that mean? Nothing uh, good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so now we're going to start tracking a line again? As soon as I get back underneath Atlanta. Okay, yep, sounds good. Bio boxes, uh, racking the camera in and out. Yes, um, everything. Facing in the correct direction and making headway. Surprised the lights aren't hydraulic. Shout out to one of my friends who's watching right now. Her name's Bella, and she is one of my best friends. And she's studying right now for chemistry, but she's <laughs> listening along, and I'm like, thank you. She's one of my best friends and best supporters, and I love her. Nice. Oh, hi, Bella. Good luck with your chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> you say Bella? Bella, yeah. Bella. She, um,. Through this whole watch, I'm just going to keep saying, look at that, Bella. <laughs> yeah. The chemistry grade will plummet. Yeah, that's, she was like, I'm going to have to, like, get off of this and, like, try to focus. And I was like, good luck, because we keep seeing fantastic things on, <laughs> on the screen. But, yeah, I miss her. She's, oh, wait, is there? No, okay. I thought that was a fish. <laughs> you just totally, what? like... There's a fish. Cut yourself off. Right. It's right. Squirrel. I know I did. I really Squirrel. did. <laughs> Sorry. Look, Bella. it's a cool rock. Yeah, but Bella's really cool because <laughs> she uh she wants to be a um a natural a park ranger. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah, she's natural renewable natural resources and renewables major. So. That sounds like a good fit for national parks. Yeah. 
Nice. Well, she says hi and that she loves you. Aww. <laughs> and now we got other people in the chat saying good luck, Bella. So everyone's supporting you. Go, Bella. <laughs> yeah, Bella. Quebec That's just, just Rennie again down in the... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she did actually a really cool thing in the summer. She was in New Mexico and she helped with um, making trails in the in the, one of the national parks. Cool. So, yeah, she's really cool. Asaka has noted that she saw a larger right. of those, one of those white colonies we just collected. That, so they're definitely smaller recruits. Bridge it's good down. that we got a collection. Can we please track a line bearing 250 at speed 0 0.4? Thank you. So as we did our first um, collection, our first sampling of our watch, um, I just wanted to invite um, everyone in the control van, those listening. You can bring auto heading back on and um, to back consider. around to what's our bearing? Sorry, Malia. 250. Go ahead. 250. Okay. To consider the sensitivity of sampling. Um, especially in indigenous communities. Um, that's part of best practices and some of the guidelines that indigenous communities are um, leading is how to teach researchers and scientists, um, you know, whether is that sample necessary to collect and how is the research gonna benefit in the indigenous communities that the research is um, happening in. And so I, I wanted to read this um, from Braiding Sweetgrass. It's a beautiful reminder for all of us to really look at the world, not as objects, not as its, but as living organisms. And that there's this relationship, especially in Papahanaumokuakea, this place that we're doing research in, that we have a living relationship with this entire ecosystem and the organisms that live in it. So I'm going to read you a little quote from Robin Wall Kimmerer's Braiding Sweetgrass. Know the ways of the ones who take care of you so that you may take care of them. Introduce yourself. Be accountable as the one who comes asking for life. Ask permission before taking. Abide by the answer. Never take the first. Never take the last. Take only what you need. Take only that which is given. Never take more than half. Leave some for others. Harvest in a way that minimizes harm. Use it respectfully. Never waste what you have taken. Share. Give thanks for what you have been given. Give a gift in reciprocity for what you have taken. Sustain the ones who sustain you, and the earth will last forever. I'll let that sit with you all for a little while. Yes, Malia, that was so great. And I'm so glad that you brought that in here to share with us on our watch and um, gave us that reminder as we 
continue about this, uh, not just this dive, but the rest of our expedition and even future expeditions. And um, it's so important that we um, not just incorporate, but value these indigenous knowledge systems and make sure that this is part of our science. And uh, for our viewers that are listening, for um, some of you who may be like listening for the t first time or maybe have listened for a long time, uh, I just want to recognize like how special um, it has been to have you in here, Malia, to share all of this knowledge. And you've taught me so much sitting in this control van next to you. So I'm just so grateful. And I know I say it so often, but that was amazing. Oh, mahalo. You know, and I don't speak on behalf of myself. You know, I come here representing um, Papa Hanau Mukuakia and the indigenous community that has a connection to this place. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this is these are issues that we need to have conversations about. And, you know, that's the way that we move forward. And how do we weave indigenous knowledge and science into practices that really honor our relationships with the earth and with the ecosystems that we um, are doing our work in. And I think this is a new paradigm. I think that shift is occurring, that transformation of the way that we look at the world and each other. And so, um, you know, I just feel very um, honored to be here. You know, these are maybe things that people don't want to hear, um, but as an indigenous woman, connected to this place, it's my kuleana, it's my responsibility to make sure that the work that occurs here is pono, that it's reciprocal, that we are giving as much as we're taking, and that that is the way our people operate, and we will continue to operate. Mm -hmm. And for any of you who maybe missed uh, where that reading came from, that was from Braiding Sweetgrass, which is just an amazing book. And I see we have some uh, viewers that are commenting like just how much they also love that book. So definitely check it out and read it. It's full of just so much knowledge. Wow. You think this that detached from this? Yeah. Looks like it. Wow. Yeah, I think it probably did. Wonderful. But I don't think, but not recently. No, no, no. Because there's corals that yeah, are yeah. in there. Yeah, but that's cool though. That's wow, and you wonder like when that happened, or at least I, I wonder when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder have have you noticed if the other watches have seen similar dike like dikes? Uh, I don't know. Okay. You don't have to account that one of our dives, it, one of our shifts is geologist free, so they may not be noticing these things <laughs> as well. I think Hans even talked to me though this morning at breakfast about seeing the dikes and I was like, oh yeah. So I think I think Hans, Hans knows what they look like. Hans knows a thing or two about geology. Yeah. That is a useful skill as an archaeologist. Yeah. Yeah, he knows a thing or two about a lot of things. You know, because he, he works for the for National Marine Sanctuaries Office, so, he, uh, you know, at, despite being an archaeologist, he has a lot of exposure to, um, you know, this sort of work in these sort of waters. Mm. I think you can, sometimes you can, like, you know, even being an archaeologist on this boat, you can pick up, you can pick up stuff without even attending to. <laughs> um, Asako is, is requesting a zoom on one of these large fans when you get a chance. Behind us. The large ones behind us. Sterno stylus? Sterno stylus. How about I frame up all of them? That one's got a crab on it. Are those not bamboo? This one's got a crab on it. These, these crabs are Cyrano Silas. Okay. She said any of them. You can zoom in on. Yeah, you can zoom in on any of these. You All can right, go zoom in zoom. on any of these. 
Sorry. You can zoom in on any of these. <laughs> I just thought we all should say it. Yeah. Is it, is it okay if I zoom on this one? <laughs> yeah, can you actually zoom a little bit to the top <laughs> left so we can see the crab as well? <laughs> any of them but this one. This guy. That's cool. That's full zoom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the zoom. All right. Check it out, Bella. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ed, you know, coming out. Pick up and scram. Pick up and scram. Skedaddling. Full wide little push. Full wide. No push. Ready? It's amazing to me how how well uh, these coral experts know, you know, just by sight. Because, like, I mean, I, I couldn't have told you that. Oh, we hadn't seen those on the previous watch. I, I can barely tell the difference. So it's it's cool. I mean, like, I can be. I understand like bamboo and hard and soft coral and that sort of stuff. But um, to know offhand that we didn't see a specific type on the last watch is uh, that's pretty cool. Our ship bearing it right now is 250. 250, right. Yeah. So I'll come over here in front of Atlanta. Watch change of video. Masako notes a notable change in the composition. Normally it was primarily dominated by chrysogorgids, but now we're seeing the bamboo starting to get more dominance. But we're seeing some small, low-lying ones as well now, so it's almost like that little area we were just in was almost dominated by purely bamboo. We're like halfway, halfway to wave point four. Yeah, we're it. moving. And we're still seeing really good stuff. And we got a sample. And we got a sample. Rat tail. That was fast, I didn't even see it. It is dummy. The Atalanta cam looks really cool right now. Oh yeah. I wish I could have watched the seamount form. Like, I wish I could have seen a time <laughs> yeah. lapse of like all of this. Oh, that's a really good uh, Atalanta shot. Oh my gosh, yeah. Taking highlights. Of these. You can even see a big sponge in the Atlanta cam right now in the corner. Oh, wow, yeah. I reckon you're going to need some altitude there, Jacob. <laughs> I was already on my way up. Asaka thinks it would be cool for us to have a time lapse of us going up and seeing how the coral change as we move on. I know. That's... Oh, I 
again, I wish I had a time lapse from like the beginning to oh, now. Of the earth. Yeah, honestly, yeah. <laughs> of the earth. <laughs> I really do. I think about that sometimes. I'm like, when I die, one of the things I want to do when I like get to wherever I'm at is I'm going to be like, okay, I want to watch like the beginning to now or like even the end. I just want to see it all. <laughs> You have like, I have so many questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I imagine like sitting down and just like, and like with popcorn and just like watching it and then like crying when the trilobites die and just like. <laughs> <laughs> just but then they become fossilized, so it's cool. Yeah, yeah. But I was really upset when they died. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I actually have a trilobite fossil that I got from Tennessee That's from a cool. cool geoscientist. And he gave it to me for really cheap, for like $35, because I to like talked to him for like an hour <laughs> about, about, about my love for, um, for rocks. And yeah, <laughs> that's my story about a trilobite fossil that I have. Do you have any other fossils? Yeah, I do. So I also have the shedding of a trilobite skeleton. Yeah, that that's pretty cool. Or like where they dug them, they're like bury themselves. I have that as a fossil. So, and then, let me think, what else? Yeah. I don't really have that much fossils. Oh, I don't remember what they're called, but they're, they're the size of your hand and they look like a, like a flat seashell and but the lines are very spread apart and they're from the Simonian Tyronean boundary line so I don't know if you know or no. know what that <laughs> is. I love that you remember that. Probably not. well I remember it because it's one of the um, biomarkers that helps um, identify what time period you're in oh. and we collected it from Pablo, Colorado, in the desert. And it was really funny because when we were out there collecting it, my advisor, my professor was like, watch out for, um, for black, <laughs> for, for, uh, oh my gosh, what was it? Black Panthers or black something? And then we were black like, something. what? And I mean, he was like the black beast. I think that's what he said, and we we were so like nervous. But he was like old with like a walking cane, and I was like, "What's gonna happen if like a black beast did come? Like, how would he run away?" And I was just like, <laughs> "But we did see, we saw a pink coral snake when we were looking Ooh. at this, and that was really freaky. I don't like snakes. Same. What isn't it like Indiana Jones doesn't like snakes either? Correct. Yeah. I recently rewatched all of those. Hmm. Nice. But I didn't go see the Dial of Destiny. I didn't either. I'm going to wait for it on, uh, on demand. On Disney Plus? Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm going to do, There too. were a lot of movies I wanted to see this summer, and that wasn't at the top. Nope. Not for me. I do want to see it, but I, yeah. yeah. I don't have so much time. Yeah. It was, I think the movies of the summer for me were obviously the Barbie and the Oppenheimer movie. I didn't see either. Uh, I was away when they came out, but like The Flash. Oh, you want to see that? Yeah. I actually really liked it. I know nobody else did, but <laughs> oh well. Stiff breeze coming up over the hill. Um, can we get a Guardians little bit of a pan to the right? I'm curious about all these little low-lying white pieces. Oh, they're like babies? Yeah. <laughs> babies. <laughs> like bees? Yeah. Because I'm wondering if those are signs of trawling because they're new settlements. How deep are we? We are at 1,564, if my sim's correct. Um, I mean, I guess you could, like, trawling would cause resuspension of sediments and some of that could settle down here, but I wouldn't expect that this area was trawled. I'm not seeing anything noticeable on... Asako thinks it's interesting as well. The rock, I'm trying to think if this is unusual for, I feel like the rocks would be okay. I don't know, actually. I don't think this rock would uh, be damaged too much by yeah. trawling. 
I don't think this they looks would strong. It, you know, they would only lose have to lose gear here once to avoid it. Um, I, I don't think that you would trawl successfully over this landscape, and that you probably break nets, and they would not come back here often. Mm. Um, but we could start seeing uh, lost trawl gear eventually. That would show up in the sonar. Wow, there are so many babies. It's also of note that there come has up, been please. signs of um, post-erosional volcanism on top of this Giao. So it is possible these yeah, are younger guava flows, possibly. Is that a possibility, can't. Hannah? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, because of recent. the other corals are on it are also, like that would have to be, they would also have been very small. I feel like they would all have been affected. Um, Asako thinks we should take a disc in here. Uh, because of all the babies. Yeah, if we can also yeah. make sure that we're in that um, correct height range that Steve requested. So around two, two. to three meters off the bottom. Yeah. So the ship's moving at 0.4 knots. Derek passed on to me that if you guys want to sample, we have to ask the ship to stop. Okay. Hello, Sam Blaine. We have a, probably close to a 100 meter layback, so even if you do stop the ship, Atlanta's going to swing in yeah, 100 okay. meters. Yeah, okay. Got it. And uh, given the level of chatter back there, I've got, uh, I'm not listening to SPL. If you want to, uh, something to happen up here, you can ask Mike, and then he can ask me. several small fish. Mm. Can you pan that nav screen for me, please? that we can collect a sample on like this side where like the slope failure is yeah if you want um yeah i mean if uh we can i, I just I yeah we can slow the ship um ahead of that so that we're able to get it slow down and yeah, stop like, it in that area like right here yeah um so nav the idea is that we want to um we're, and we're planning ahead here we want to stop the ship so that we can sample just to the south of waypoint four along the slope there i can hear mike well wherever you stop the ship it's atlanta's gonna wind up here right so plan accordingly <laughs> you can just stop it doesn't matter but there's no uh vertical walls that I can see out 100 meters, so. So where the stern of the ship is, that's good? Okay. Yeah, because I know we, d we couldn't go It'll get a little more uh, like <laughs> controlled as, you know, Atlanta starts slowing down as it swings in, but at the moment, it's, you know, we're yeah. Full beans to I'm stay out in front of it. Right here. Yeah, we might drift a bit.
Do you think you guys will want to Niskin? Come up five. No, not there. Thanks, Mike. Jacob, can you come up five? Up another five, please. Climbing the hill here. I love to see this white coral thriving along this slope. Um, should I s oops. Huh? Um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, oh, yeah, maybe I should. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, look at that long yeah. single branch. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. So, like, oh, sorry, kick up. Oh, oh, okay. Um, so, I think what M Mike said was along the stern side of the boat, like towards the downslope on like the cliff side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like forward. Yes, yes. So yeah, just like yeah. maybe in between this yeah. contour keep lines. Going, yeah, keep going down a little bit more. Over here? Yes, exactly. Okay, so within this contour. Yes. Okay. Let I me. wish I had like a like a marker for that. I know. <laughs> so that's like, 50, that's about 50, 50 meters. Okay. 
five zero meters. Yes, five zero at two two four. At bearing two two four. <laughs> that was not a call for you, Bridge. <laughs> oh, we've been seeing a lot of the white corals. Which ones? Like these. Okay, yeah. And these. These look We took dead. a sample of them. Okay. <laughs> Did they uh, <laughs> say what, what is the possible uh, ID? Um, Lots of ice. It is here. It's not. Okay, yes, yeah, bam Okay, bamboo coral. And also, if you guys see uh, one of the yellow Acanthogorgia colonies, that is also a target for um, collection. Okay, big. we haven't seen them yet. Okay, they should be like big yeah. yellow fans. Okay. Yes, I can see your screen. Yes, 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 that's good. Perfect, thank you. No worries. But yeah, there's also like a lot of these little babies. Yeah, those are cup corals. Those oh. are a different kind. Okay. So those are uh, scleractinians and they are solitary. Okay. Wow, look how big this one yeah, is. Yeah, let's see. That's an Anthomastus, probably, the stalk. Mm -hmm. And then this is like something I really like, the brucingids. Is, is that like a crinoid? That's a sea star. Oh, that is a sea star. Yeah, they're the weird sea stars. Wow. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm the sea star spotter. I manifest sea stars. Upasha manifests uh, octopus, octopods. Wow, that's they are very massive cool. sea yeah. star. Our, uh, our voices are powerful. Pretty big. Yeah. Kanaloa listens. Take some photos yeah. of them. Oh, yeah. He knows what we're up to. That's a, The sea and stars are Brasingid, is that right? Which would be this one? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, Brisingid, Brisingid, oh, I'm not sure Brisingid. how you pronounce it. Oh, okay. um, and then the common name is Brittle Star. Brittle Star. Yeah. Mahalo. Mahalo, thank you very much. Taylor, and this so is. The Brisingid is this one. This oh, star Brisingid. is called the Brisingid. Brisingid. Yes. Brisingid. Okay. And these are basket stars. Okay. See, I would have confused myself and thought that was a crinoid. Yeah, they do look like crinoids. Want to go for zoom? Okay. That's a fair confusion. Oh, oh wait, is that like a... Is that oh, squat is lobster. Okay, they're ju it's just white. Yeah, they're the Munidopsidae family, probably the genus Munidopsis. So they generally remain perched up on corals. So now it just got off. We saw it getting mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. Do you think they changed the color? Or they're, they're just born that color. Yeah, I don't think they change colors. I think these are whitish. They probably look more white from the light that's being, that we are shining on them, but... Do you think that because... Do you think they recognize that their color matches the white coral? Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, they just because get lucky. We, yeah, because we don't have light. There's, everything's uh -huh. dark. Yeah. So... That's so funny. Mm -hmm. So they just... Why invest in making color when you don't have to? Yeah. It's amazing that we have so many colorful things when it's really not that <laughs> useful down here. Yeah. This, this is a science communication fellow, Daniel Kinzer. I'm just uh, honored to, to be, for a moment, on the uh, on the four to eight watch. I'm sitting in for Tori while she grabs dinner downstairs. And yeah, I'm just admiring this beautiful place with uh, a new control van filled with beautiful people. Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for letting me join join the show for a little bit. The 4 to 8 show. It's a good yeah. one. I'm, I'm often sleeping during the 4 to 8 show because I have to, but... Yeah, we are also the, visitors in the yeah. 4 to 8 show. Me, yeah. and Ren, and Mia. Oh, I'm, good. I'm going to go directly to sleep after this. <laughs> Absolutely. I won't pass go. I won't pass $200, whatever, Monopoly. Directly. <laughs> 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 Sleep is way more important at this point. Yes. Did we cross waypoint three? 
Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, they were. Good. I mean, compared to us, they, they're almost at waypoint four. Yeah, but, that was uh, our the, goal. Yeah, and it's only uh, an hour and a half into their watch, so. We've been trucking it. Yeah. We really have. <laughs> <laughs> Make us feel a little bad. Uh, but well, we, well y'all did a lot. Y'all had cool stuff, though. <laughs> we did, and uh, the topology was really difficult they, yeah. to navigate around. There's a lot of cup corals here, and there's beautiful crinoids sitting on top of the metallogorgia. There's an iridogorgia, also a crinoid on a hemicorallium on the right. Wow. It's crazy how fast you, you say these things. <laughs> <laughs> Polyke? Like, is this another one of those another, we're singing? Yes, yes. See, I'm learning slowly. No, you're learning fast. Oh, yeah. Guys, we're actually, we're right at waypoint four. Oh, okay. You guys really did book it. <laughs> yeah. Look at these angular rocks. Oh, is that something? Yeah, it's probably a polynite the worms, the polychaetes. Uh-huh, the ones that are like... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm already seeing good huh? rocks, so... <laughs> Our geologist is getting excited. I am. I mean, I'm getting excited. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to hand it back to Derek. Thank you, Mia. Bye, Mia. See you at midnight. See you at Have midnight. Have a good rest. I'm uh, sitting next to Malia Evans, which I'm so thankful for. She's a good, a good friend and great teacher, and I'm excited for uh, for friends and family back home, Ohana back home, to name all of these. Uh, all of these relatives, all of these kopuna, these elders uh, that are living out here in the deep sea, Papahanaumokuakea, and give them their Hawaiian names. It's uh, yeah, such always an amazing. amazing process that we have our um, Native Hawaiian Culture Working Group, which is composed of scholars and cultural practitioners and scientists and educators um, that you know work really hard and diligently to create names. Um, there are nomenclature, um, group and they put so much time and effort into creating the right names based on so many different characteristics of these different organisms you know from the depths they come from you know from the descriptions that they the descriptors of what they look like um, what they feed on there's so much thought and EK knowledge mm. that goes into this process of naming and um, you, as we know, in, in indigenous cultures, names have power. They do. And so the process of naming is really a, an intellectual, emotional, spiritual process. And, um, you know, the naming of organisms is, is a big kule'ana, a big responsibility. Absolutely. So we just always honor them for the time that they spend and the um, knowledge that they share to um, do what's right, what's pono, um, what's appropriate um, from a Hawaiian lens. That's right. So many layers of knowledge and meaning held in these uh, these organisms, our extended huh? family Radio in the deep sea. I don't know. Do we? Did we want a rock here? Oh what no. No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, some these, people in these the room. Look amazing rocks. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just but waiting. I'm, I'm waiting so. to go further a little the bit by the um the slope collapse yeah. so sounds good these yeah. rocks look but so uh so now cozy. i'm worried that if we get over there what if there's <laughs> <laughs> nothing there it's no, fine sure it's fine it's be, fine yeah. it's just a sign it'll be okay we'll, we'll take what kanaloa gives us these pohaku are beautiful though i agree and uh it's so such a such a thrill to be a mile. How deep are we now? Let's see. Yeah, still all, nearly a mile below the surface. And uh, yeah, just just amazing to uh, be just climbing over the edge of this slope. Bridge nav. Can we do a 45 meter move at bearing 240? at 0 0.3 knots. Two, four, zero. Correct. 
Oh, would you call this like little lens feature? Two, four, four, yeah, is there yeah. Uh, geologist with us. Yeah, yeah we need so to start I think some this cars. is <laughs> this is all part of what possibly could have been the slope failure, like all those breakage mm -hmm. from the slope. So, but I have been seeing a lot of like these shapes. Yes, and I not really i feel it's a definitely a low bait flow what does that mean so that means that it's it moves like in the medium speed like there's a sheet flow that's like really fast and rolls. then um there's the pillow lava which is what we collect mm -hmm. and they're not attached to anything and low bait flows they look like honestly they look kind of like like a like they have extensions no it's like I I like I say projection? like brain. Okay. Okay. Like, yeah. Like mounds. Okay, like yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Come on. I I usually yeah I just picture them as like brains. I don't know why. Yeah. No, I get that. That's a good description. Yeah, like the ridges in her brain. Yeah. yeah. Bridge, yes. Yeah. Exactly. I can see that. So you're you're saying that this is how the whole area mm -hmm. is? The whole sea mount is at this part of? Uh, just what I've been seeing. Okay. And usually at the top of the slopes mm -hmm. has been or like making up the slopes are sheet flows, what I've been noticing. And then, um, yeah, but this is just, it's really interesting how there's so many like edges. Edges, yeah. Which really gives me excitement for the rocks because hopefully a lot of them are angular. Mm -hmm. What is, why do you guys want angular rocks? Can you explain that? Yeah, so the reason why we want angular rocks is because you're able, it's the flow and the minerals that are associated with them mm -hmm. will hopefully be what we want. Because for example, our last um, our last dive on the Loudoun, mm -hmm. we, one of the samples that we got was really flat and it had that botryoidal texture. And so when we sawed it open, it was severe, like it was severely altered for what at least Dr. Val and I look for for our samples. So we try to steer clear of anything flat or like pancake looking. So we want that angular like pillow basalt. So so do these pillow basalt angular rocks eventually get modified into those uh, botryoidal rocks or no, they have a different origin? I'm, n we are not sure because I asked the same thing about okay. what does it symbolize if it's a botryoidal versus a normal texture. Yeah. Can we zoom and on that we're not really looking that sponge. sure. Yellow looking yes. sponge. Yeah. In the bottom left. Because I was yeah. also really curious about that because especially on the loud and seamount, I noticed that there was a ton of those yeah. compared to the King George and this unnamed seamount. Go for zoom. Oh. Look at that. I've seen those. Don't know their names. <laughs> so is it a sponge? Or? It is a okay. sponge. It's one of the <coughs> encrusting sponges. Hexactinellids from the structure. Cannot recall the name. They're very difficult to ID as well because there are several that look kind of this color but each one of them is apparently different from one another. But we are seeing a higher density of cup corals than we were seeing before. Yeah, yeah no, definitely getting up to All wave right. point 0.4 Coming has out. been massive amounts of them. I thought they were babies. <laughs> no, <laughs> these are, where these are Thank you for the zoom. So th that's their normal size? Yes. Okay. But they're individuals, they are, they're solitary, they're not uh, colonial. Mm. That's a beautiful Iridogorgia. This one's the Iridogorgia. Mm. That looks like a firework. Yeah. Uh -huh. A spiral. That's a great description of what they look like. I love those Iridogorgia. So the uh, pattern is so uh, entrancing. Yes. It's spiral. They're so beautiful. What's the spiral thing in? Fibonacci, is that? The Fibonacci, Fibonacci sequence? Twins. I don't think if it, I'm not <laughs> sure if this follows the Fibonacci. I don't know, but I was but just thinking yeah. about that. And that's a beautiful... When I hear spiral, yeah. I just think... 
back and then it brings me back to high school. <laughs> yeah, there is a Fibonacci twist, but I'm not sure if they follow that. Mm. I'm sure somebody must have tested that. Mm. Those are beautiful bamboo corals, probably Echnomyces. We have some Chrysogorgia with crinoids. Look at all these crinoids. Oh, look at oh, the yeah. one. Look at that one moving so beautifully. Yeah, in the water. Yeah, Dilrad, it could have been a Dima sponge as well, you know, the yellow one, as Asaka pointed out. It kind of looked more translucent for a uh, Dima sponge, but could have been. Oh, look at that sea star. Oh, that sea star, mm -hmm. definitely. A, uh, he, he just had a good snack, asteroid. looks like. Yeah, there's too many corals to feed on. <laughs> yeah. oh, look at this whole clap sound. Oh. Yeah. What would you suggest of what has happened So in this what part? I think happened is basically this could have been like a sheet flow mm -hmm. and then it could have just Collab. collapsed because it's hollow. There was nothing in it. So It's kind of like a lava it's tube. It's a lava tube. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Think, uh, anyone's home? Yeah, let's go. Let's go through it. So get, you're saying get, that get in there, <laughs> many of this can be hollow inside? Yeah, okay. that will be a feat. I Look at that. I wonder if you. this is like two channels. I believe in you, Jake. I believe in you. <laughs> I'm sure we could at least speak inside. <laughs> yeah. I wish. That looks like a nice cozy spot yeah. to live. And also the aftermath is hanging beautifully at the entrance. Mm-hmm. These features on land above the surface are so incredible and uh, the Hawaiian Islands are littered with these lava tubes and they're just spectacular. Oh yeah. yeah, me and Dr. Val actually went in to one of the big ones on the big island and we just like kept walking That's and it was awesome. like for miles. Yeah. And then <laughs> we smelled something weird and Dr. Val was like, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> there, oh, there, are, um, there are stories in Hawaii on Oahu that uh, there were lava tubes that passed from one fish pond on the southern shore to another fish wow. pond on the eastern shore and that fish used to migrate through lava tubes beneath the island to move back and forth. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, amazing. Bridge now. Okay, we should be getting close. Oh, wow, this is steep. To a rock. Can we do a, close a to the 10 rock. meter move? Yeah, at bearing whatever rock we get. Mm. Thank you. Wow, look at this texture. Yeah. Do you have any idea of what Maybe oh, it kind of it it does kind of look like Boitriotl right there, and it funny. So when I looked up what Boitriotl was, it was like grape like. <laughs> and yeah, I was like, I okay. The description is. Round wow. bit more. Yeah, there was a ferret sponge with a crinoid. We're seeing lots of crinoids here. Whoa. Well, Whoa, look at yeah, that one. Yeah, that's oh. another one of oh those my gosh. huge Paragorgia fans with a ton oh of crinoids on it. Look at the base. Yes. Yeah. How old do you think that one is? Oh, those it's are probably trunk. hundreds of years old. More than that. We still haven't. You think like a thousand? Probably. Wow. That base is like eight, 17, Beautiful 18 pattern, centimeters yeah. across. Yeah, 50, we were measuring one before it was almost uh, over like something between 15 to 20 centimeters across. Wow. Looks like a beautiful uh, river system or dendrites of neurons or. Looks like one branch is broken off. Still caps yeah. Of Incredible still pattern. Camera. Oh yeah. Take. A oh, sorry. I forget that I have <laughs> the power <laughs> of the <laughs> camera right now. And yeah. this is a paragorgia. Yes. Is, okay. Yes. This is Thank a paragorgia. And the smaller fans at the base, they would, those would be. Bamboo coral fans. That was. Wow. We have many viewers on the internet who saw lots of different creatures inside that lava tube. So, Jake, we should have gone in there. There was uh, <laughs> many, many different visions. Yeah, this is looks, this is the hangout spot for the crinoids. They like that yeah. paragorgia. And there's one Kyra uh, style extending its arm out. Yeah, oh wow, yeah. See There's at least three on them that I saw, or more actually. There's several squat lobsters, many squat lobsters. I wow. spoke too soon. All the squat lobsters having a good old time on the yep. Paragorgia hangout. There's a large Anthomasters. So 
Are there any rock targets in here, or should we keep moving on? Oh, we're, we're almost there. <laughs> we're almost there. We have a lot of questions coming in about whether or not um, geological formations have uh, names in Olelo Hawaii as well. And uh, I don't know, the. I, I think the answer to that question is not yet, but I do know that geologists use the term kipuka, which is an Olelo Hawaii word to uh, describe where we see life flourishing uh, in the center of lava flow. So where lava flows around patches of forest or um, other biological materials on land, and you have little patches of living forest. Uh, those are called kipuka, and, and that was a word geologists have uh, borrowed from, from the Hawaiians. So uh, I imagine lots of these formations will, uh, will get Hawaiian names if they don't already have them. Well, there is one. There is Pele's hair. Bridge yeah, down. that's Which true. Which is the Pele's hair. lava that Can you please track glass that dries extremely fast. Zero? In, well, above the surface. You wouldn't find Pele's hair underwater. Underwater, yeah, but I know we, we have to actually be careful with Pele's hair mm -hmm. when we're uh, going to observe, uh, offer ho'okupu, offer gifts to Pele uh, uh, during eruptions, like the one that's happening now at Kilauea up at the summit, um, and uh, worry about those strands, those uh, strands in the air. Um, don't want to breathe them in, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I guess fine particles of glass and mm -hmm. other things in, in there. It's really spectacular. I had to do a, a pro that was like my first project as a freshman. Oh, was yeah. on Pele's hair. Oh, very cool. Very, very cool. Okay. So what? what there's some this? rocks down there. <laughs> Takers. It's a sponge. We hey guys, there's some rocks down there. <laughs> I'm Come down a little bit. Too. Really hoping. I'm really they, hoping that, they that move. they'll move. So really. Are you saying you want an all-stop right now? Yes, yeah. please. I think they. I think one of these is going to be just right. I feel like Conalor right, yeah. uh, wants to help you with your science. And, um, please. All-stop, please. I think, okay. I think we're going to have some good luck. So, that's massive. Is it? I can't is tell. Is it not? I don't is know. this one too big? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Well, I was thinking, okay, this one, this Try one, it. and this one. I'm looking at these, like, right. three. Is this one too big? <laughs> 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 we can take it with the sponge. Yeah. No, no, no. We have to leave the sponge. We can take it. I'm kidding. That's impressive. Right. Okay. We get very excited about sampling, and we also oh. know that we right. are... Oh receiving a gift so we are grateful for the opportunity to do our science and conduct what? this work out here in Papahanaumokuakea. Yeah. Yeah. I was also kidding in case that wasn't clear. Yeah, <laughs> we, definitely, we definitely know <laughs> and I think crafting. the internet <laughs> is also aware. We'll know <laughs> eventually. We love you internet. Thank you for tuning in. If you're tuning in on Nautilus Live or on YouTube, uh, we appreciate you and we welcome your comments, your questions. You're part of our exploration team. We, um, we do this for you. And uh, we love all your insights. There's a lot of knowledge that's shared. Um, OK. What about this one? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It's this super one. square. Okay. I'm going to draw a very tight circle around it. We've there got we go. our science team um, doing a great job team, collaborating. Where do we think this sample will go? Give us one sec. Where do you think the <laughs> <laughs> What was that? Sorry. Where do you think the sample will go? Um, depending it's on it's, it's this it's one. Pretty, yeah, it's a decent size, so we could put that in. It's uh, probably this one? okay. Actually, this we only have no, two boxes. To the left yeah, down one. corals. Um, so Omega, the forward box, or the starboard box F. Okay. Um, I think it'll fit in F. It's only like 10 to 15 yeah. centimeters. Are yeah, lasers on? Yeah, I just don't one. see. Them. Yeah, they're behind. Yeah. The, they're on the claw right now. Oh, got it. Oh, yeah, they're there. Oh, got it. thanks for that. <laughs> oh, it's oh, you, you be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. Someone She's freaking. Yeah, yeah. It no, really, it did. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. Like three rocks. It wouldn't move, and she was so excited, and then we couldn't get a sample. Oh my god. So she's so stressed out right now. <laughs> that little one moved. If it doesn't want to come, then it doesn't have to come with us. <laughs> if it doesn't want to come, pull harder. Oh, that no. Big one is well, some of them move. That's a good sign. 
That little one up above the arm looks free. It has a, a cup? No, what yeah, is that it? Yeah, that one's not moving. Huh? <gasps> yeah, cup coral there. That, what about that little one there down on the uh, lower left? That little one that might budge? be too, too tiny. Too small. Uh, that one? I don't know how big that one is. I that can't one? tell. That one, one could work. That about 10 centimeters. And that's definitely loose. Let's see. Let's but yeah, there is a cup coral Let's see how big it. it is. Yeah, it's about 10. Oh, that's got a coral on it. Okay. It's bigger than it looks. That's a nice <coughs> rectangular see. shape. Do a little push mm -hmm. here. Ooh. That looks good to me. All right. Starboard box? Yeah, starboard box F. And then we have one of the, the cup. Yeah, cup coral as well. That brings our total up to seven biological samples, and it'll be four geological. So will that count as a second, an additional sample, the, cor the cup coral on it? So it'll be in the same sample. I won't okay. log another sample cool. number yep. for it. I'm just curious, yeah, how the yeah. process worked. Awesome. There's like, I could see the reasoning behind doing it either way. I was just curious. Thank you, guys. I appreciate if, all the patience and the help. If you're watching camera one and not the quad or camera three, you may want to watch Jake. He's which, about uh, to slam which, dunk uh, this rock. Which, <laughs> which litter? Uh, Foxtrot. Alpha so the Foxtrot. Slam dunk this rock. I think Foxtrot is forward or outboard aft, yeah. Perfect. Sample collected. Great, thank you. Awesome. Sample thank zero you guys. five one. Sample zero five one. Y'all are awesome. Look, a baby sea star. <laughs> Yeah. Can I zoom on the sponge? That Over is here. so cool. Yeah, the still camera, I think it actually takes probably higher resolution photos than the captures from the video. Some of them look really great. <laughs> oh. That's I think it's a little, a little coral that's, uh, that's retracted. Little brittle star on the left. About the size of a laser dot. <laughs> yeah, it is. And super bright at top. It's like shooting into a mirror. Oh. All right, we're going to start moving again. All right, yep. all, right. Come all, all the way up. Yes, please. Little push. We can start moving. Bridge nav. Uh, 347. I'd like to track a line bearing Sorry, I missed that. Two two zero. Look at these yellow. Yeah, that's cool. Is that a brittle star up there? Oh, so that's a Brzing, Brzing, Brzing star. Uh huh. Oh. Because I thought that it was 
a crinoid. And then Ashana told me what it was, and I was like, thank you. Who did? Ashana. Oh, Ashana. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I couldn't tell. <laughs> I think uh, I'm tugging on the tether a little bit. You can come down maybe a little bit. 20 meters of... I don't know, uh, around 15, give or take, a couple meters. Okay. So I kind of, if we do get there, it'll be right here. The next. After step. waypoint. Well, oh, either at waypoint before five. Or okay. at, yes. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, if you'd like to go eat, you can go eat. But meet your mic. But tell me this mic. Sorry, I had to. <laughs> She's like, should I go eat? I was like, yeah. Huh. Looks like a bloop. Bridge nap. I'd like what to modify you? our bearing to 205, please. Oh. Thank you. Is it some, looks like it might be some kind of cucumber, but I'm not sure. Huh. Oh, you guys just got blown away. Is that an anemone? Yep. Um, yeah. Can we get a zoom on that? Uh-huh. I have an idea of what it is, but I have to look up the name. Go for zoom. Sure. Coming in. Bella, make sure you ask Hannah about all the anemones she saw, just because it'll make her have to say that word over and over again. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's really dark, huh? Yeah. 
does have I think frosted it's relicanthidae. tips. It's, no, it's not relicanthidae. I think it's it's a little too more. short. A little detail the other way. There it is. Come out and show the whole thing. Whoosh. There's a little tube down in that collapse off to the right, too. See that? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. This guy looks similar to a Lipona Mateidae. I'm Harry, not sure if the exact ID. But Harry it's Potter similar. spell of yours. Oh, but then science chat just confirmed it for me. I should just wait. <laughs> Wow, that's a lot of red. Yeah, that anemone is a really dark, nice color yeah, and red. Yeah, we have a whole bunch oh, of mushroom at corals at the bottom of there. Can we wow. get a zoom in on that, please? Yeah. Oop, They're zoom. growing all over each other. Oh, wow. Would you say these anemones are at the bottom? These are mushroom coral. Those are mushroom corals. Yeah, there's a bunch of separate individuals. You can see the big stalks underneath the, each individual. Mm -hmm. So it makes it look like one giant one when it's actually a bunch of several large ones. So we have a current gone from starboard to port? Yes. <clears throat> I'll go a little further in while you have a tentative hold. Or maybe tenuous is a better word. Coming out. Thank you. What are you thinking, Derek? Um, I kind of like this. 
bearing right now. Okay. I'm just trying to move up along this ridge. Okay. Going to 0 0.3, we can speed it up a little bit if you want. I think 0 0.3 is okay. Looks like we're in an area of a little bit less biology, so maybe we should pick it up to 0. Yeah, we can pick. What are we going now? 0 0.3. Yeah, we can go 0.4. Bridge nav. Can we please maintain this bearing, but uh, change the speed to 0 0.4 knots? Thank you. That purple color is so pretty. I think it's either a purple plexorid or a Victoria, Go Victoria Gorgia. Go for zoom. Gone in. Is wow. the red next That's to cool. that a crinoid? Yeah. Yep, that's a crinoid. And then we got a, a um, brittle star wrapping around it. I think this one uh, leaned more towards Victoria Gorgid because I remember Virginia mentioning the more outspoken polyps. Um, but I'm not quite sure as I'm not super familiar with the species. It's a very Tim Burton kind of look about <laughs> it. Maybe a uh, brighter red. <laughs> I'm just curious, um, Sebastian, there's such brilliant colors.
like under our light, but in the darkness, the colors don't show. So what would be like the value of having these kind of colors? Um, for red, I think that particularly like reds, orange, or purples, they're the first colors to disappear due to la loss of light attenuation on the surface. Um, so many of these animals maybe were species that were shallow water that slowly evolved in the deep sea and just happened to keep the red because it was not negatively or positively impacting them. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other corals, like the purple one we saw, may have been just a byproduct of other evolutionary traits that just didn't negatively impact them due to the dark environment. So they just happened to keep them. It wasn't selected out by evolution. So interesting. All the adaptations that <coughs> occur. And now we're seeing a lot more low-lying corals again, a lot of those cup corals. How big do these cup corals get? Like, is this like um, a mature size or are these? I believe young? these guys are mostly mature size. I believe they're a little bit more faster growing than a lot of these other more colonial corals because they are just one individual polyp. Mm. They just create a more solid foot and shell on the outer side. So it doesn't take as fat long for them to grow. They're often like early settlers on newly disturbed substrates where animals have been kind of swept clean off. They're the first to arrive and repopulate. So do you think we'll see them whenever we find the trawling? Marks, um, it depends on the location of the trawling. If there's sediment, I doubt it. If it's over um, a hard substrate like this, then yes, I'd anticipate seeing a lot. I, I don't think they would trawl over hard substrate like this. They it would just catch their gear. Um, sometimes they can't really tell where they're going at the bottom, though, so sometimes they'll just hit it. Whoa. Oh, there's a coral. very Is large paragorgid there, I believe. So the larger it is, the older it is, correct? That is generally correct, yes. For deep sea animals, the larger they are, usually much older they are. There's a fish right there next to the coral as well. Oh. Video, are we still in um, the sampling salvo? Uh, nope, you're in dive. Just look how large the base of it is. It's like very like tree trunk esque. It's absolutely beautiful. Go for zoom. Gone in. Oh, the squat lobster looks awesome. Big stretch. Oh, what's that little purple at the bottom? You see that? Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. So partial. Right. Wow, the base is huge. Can we get the lights on it to get an estimation? What, what approximately the lights? Yeah, the two Herc lights. The lasers? The lasers, the lasers? Yeah. It's approximately twenty centimeters across. So it's pretty thick. That's a kupuna coral for sure. Absolutely. So in the Hawaiian cosmology, the Kumulipo, our first, the first organism born is a coral polyp. So pretty amazing to see this ancient um, life form that's described in our one. creation chat. Right oh yeah, come on out. This one. Wow, that's a shot.
Alright. Get the head. Get behind. Whatever you want to call it. For viewers who may just be joining us, um, we are currently in Patahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument, the Aina Akua, the realm of the gods for Kanaka O'EV. And we are just so amazed by the oh, okay. beautifulness that's being revealed to us in the Sea of Kanaloa. There's a Hawaiian word. Um, called, it's Aina Momona. It's actually a phrase, Aina Momona, which means abundance. And that's what we've been seeing on this dive. Just amazing deep sea abundance. It's Aina? Aina, as in um, the land, the but Aina also incorporates the ocean as well. Mm -hmm. Aina Momona. There's another cluster of those mushroom corals. There's a big one in the in the distance too, a big uh, l another large coral. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, there's oh, several. Right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it me or is that crinoid green? <laughs> it looks it. Normally do we see like a yellowish color? I feel like that's what I've been seeing. It could be. It might just be the effects of the lighting, but most of these crinoids we've been seeing are usually a bit of an orange or a yellow. Argus shot. Oh, sorry, Atlanta shot. Can't tell if it's better or worse with the down lights on. Oh, <laughs> Look at them little arms out like they're trying to warn us to get off their lawn. <laughs> so Sebastian, we have a question from a viewer asking about the fish that we see at these steps and why so many of them have um, an eel-like tail instead of uh, like dorsal fins or caudal fins or anal fins that we see with fish in like shallower areas. That is a fantastic question. Um, it's a combination of two separate factors. For the fish physically, these fish are typically more scavengers or the tritivores and looking for to conserve energy in a deep area where there's often may not be nutrition for long periods of time. So having that eel-like form allows them to um, keep a low energy profile and kind of just wait for opportunities to arise as opposed to chasing them down. Um, another factor into us seeing so many of those opposed to other fishes is that we are loud and bright. So anything that can move fast and swim fast is avoiding us. Mm. Um, so we're often left behind are the slow 
non-mobile or less mobile fishes and animals? That's an interesting answer. They, um, that, uh, yeah, unless they find it interesting and want to come check it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I actually never thought of it that way. Well. I'm seeing some return of some glass sponges and what looks like maybe some very small barnacles there on the left, little yellow guys. Barnacles. Wow. Just a little perspective on what we're moving along here. We're actually been traversing along a ridge between two very steep slopes on either side of the vehicles. Uh, we've been kind of traversing just beneath the edge of the slope that faces to the north. And it looks like we're moving up. Coming up. Towards the ridge crest. Yeah, I got 10 meters to the wall. Yep. Where are you? Where is that? Is that a squid? It looks like it might be a squid. Wow. I can't get a good look at it though. Can we zoom Go a little zoom? bit? Yeah. Oh wow, it is a squid. Uh, no, no, it, it's no. not, it's a fish. It's oh. a, yeah, it's, I've yeah. seen one of those before, I've heard they're called. It's not a, oh. a gulper eel, is it? It's a, um, it looks like it might be a type of snipe eel, actually. Snipe? You um, said snipe or snake? Snipe. Um, so these guys have these uniquely long beak-like appendages for their mouths. That So you've been seeing those little shrimps with the long antennae following them in the water column occasionally. These guys hunt them down. They hope to entangle the shrimps in their own antennae so they can flip them out huh. and consume oh them. God. That's a specific... <laughs> yeah, it's very specific. It's a very unique adaptation exclusive to these snipe eels. Uh, I personally, I've usually seen them a lot longer. This guy looks a lot thicker and more kind of rounded around the tail, so I'm not familiar with this exact species, but that's definitely how snipe eels have their kind of beaks. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it. Welcome back, Hannah. This is like perfect timing. Oh, wow. Is this the only thing that's happened? Or we got more cool stuff. Well, we than picked I up like eight rocks. Yeah. Right, I gotta catch up. <laughs> They're on. very unique looking. Let me just kind of drop them. We're like, I don't think we need them. Sounds like you, Sebastian. Yeah, we found like Sounds these like amphiboles you. and clinopyroxenes. We're like, we don't need those. <laughs> I would I would actually cry, though, if that actually did happen. <laughs> yeah, like just this big crystal just yeah. of, of all the minerals that you need. I would just 
He's so upset. <laughs> I always, for some reason, sit facing aft in the in the dining hall, the me or the mess, and uh, <laughs> I can never see the TV and see what we're doing while I'm eating. And every time I sit down, I'm just like, oh, whoops, oh well. Yeah, I decided to sit outside. For yeah, me. there you go. For the sun. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't have access to the condiments, and I <laughs> I need my, like, buffalo sauce and soy sauce and stuff, salt and pepper. Yeah, I don't need it. I don't put any of that on <laughs> anything. Oh, my gosh. We've seen some, like, huge corals. Yeah. Like really? Huge. They Okay, yeah. so we, I saw some big corals, too. Ooh. Oh, my Whoa. gosh. Oh, wow. <laughs> there it is. Alan oh, this is, like, the one I saw with Abshant. Pull the e-brake there. Are we are we trekking still? Trekking yeah. yeah, moving. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at pictures of that snipe eel, and usually they're a lot longer and skinnier. Not sure if you guys can see it from my side. Yeah, screen. I looked it up too. I wonder if um if they're the type that can get like, you know, their tail bit off and then grow back or something. Oh no, that tail looked pretty naturally round. It had features that indicated that yeah, it was that's intact. True. Okay. Um, yeah, I I didn't see any evidence of any short ones, but that color also looks maybe a little bit unique, like the pictures I'm finding. And, and look. it's no, of note that it was kind of hanging in the water column upside down. Yeah. Which is some adaptations in other deep sea fish species I've seen, but that's. Unique variety of a snipe eel, but thank God I've never seen a living snipe eel on video before. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I may actually have to check in with my boss, Jeff Raisin, and see if that's a normal uh, feature for snipe eels. Oh, I did find a, a drawing of what could be the one we saw. Bob Looks like a bobtail snipe. snipe squid. That's squid. Snipe eel. <laughs> Let's see here. I think a snipe squid sounds awesome, though. Wow, look at this coral. It's raining food for them. The cup corals are still thriving. <laughs> cup corals rise. Mm-hmm. Those headings are just they, they just have too cute of a name to be threatening. The rise of the cup coral. It just doesn't work. My rock that I collected has a cup coral on it. <laughs> I saw that. Huh. I think that's highly unusual based on the few research, at the basic research done so far. These bobtail snipe eels have only been found in the Antarctic and the Atlantic. Huh. Whoa. Um, I'm going to look into this more, but. That's evidence leaning We've towards a new so, since a species designation because there's only two in the genera. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. It seems to get worse with certain headings. Don't want to get too excited about it, but I'm going to look into it a little bit more because it seems like yeah. consistently I'm saying two weird. genera. So, huh. Yeah. Jake can go back and sample it for you if you want. Uh, it's probably long gone by now. Oh, I'm sure he it's can still find it. It's still floating upside down. <laughs> yeah, he knows right where it is. <laughs> we had a, a navigator years ago who would put targets in high pack whenever we saw a fish, nice. among other things. And I'm like, you know that they move, right? <laughs> They're not still there. <laughs> I just, I, he said, just so we knew when it was. I was like, I know, but I thought it was funny. <laughs> 